Hello and welcome to this video on the building blocks of system models. In this series of videos we're going to be deriving various functions for different systems and the responses of those systems or the outputs of those systems depending on the input. To do that we're going to start by looking at some basic building blocks that make up electrical and mechanical system models. For electrical systems, we're going to focus on just three components. We're going to look at resistors, inductors, and capacitors. Because we find that by using these three components, we can create models of various electrical systems and their responses. We're also going to look at some mechanical analogies to these components as well, so that we can derive similar expressions for mechanical systems. Let's start with these electrical components first though and what we're going to do is we are going to define an expression for the voltage across each of these components and I'm going to call these VR for the voltage across the resistor, VL across the inductor and VC for the capacitor. For VR we're going to hopefully uh, write a formula here that we all recognize and it's Ohm's law because we know that voltage is equal to current times resistance. So in this case we have VR is equal to RI. For an inductor, VL, we're going to say that VL is equal to L, the inductance, multiplied by the derivative of current with respect to time or the rate of change of current. So we have VL equals L di by dt. For a capacitor, we have Vc, the voltage across the capacitor, is equal to 1 over C multiplied by the integral of current with respect to time. These three formulae we're going to use in order to derive various functions for different circuits. And we're going to, in this video, look at some mechanical analogies to these electrical uh, component models as well. To do that, let's first remind ourselves that the formal definition of voltage is something called an electromotive force, or an EMF. So the voltage that's applied to a component kind of forces a current I to flow through that component in a manner that's defined by these equations that we've just seen. So let's take our resistor entry as an example. We, we saw that VR equals R. I. So we're hopefully more than familiar with this equation because it's Ohm's law. I'm sure you've seen it before. But we know that a voltage kind of forces a current to flow, but that current is limited by a resistor R, and that dissipates energy as heat. So we find this idea of electromotive force is kind of equivalent to conventional physical or mechanical force that we find in mechanical systems. And we'll see some examples here. So the first of which is uh, something called a dash pot. So in a mechanical world, the equivalent of a resistor is something called a dash pot. A dash pot uses the friction of a fluid or a gas to limit the movement of the mechanical system. If you haven't heard of a dash pot before, you might have heard of shock absorbers on a car, which are the same kind of thing, or door closers mounted to the top of a door and prevent it from closing too quickly or slamming shut. They're examples of dash pots in common use. So just as resistors resist current, the, the movement of electrons in a circuit, dash pots resist movement in mechanical systems. Here's the describing formula for the dash pot. F equals mu V. And F is the force that's applied. Mu is the impedance of the dash pot, how much that dash pot is resisting movement. And V is the resulting velocity. So hopefully you can see the analogy between these two formulae, VR equals RI and F equals mu V. In both cases we have a, a force, in the electrical world it's an electromotive force or a voltage. In the mechanical world it's a physical force, F. In both cases too we have an impedance. This is the resistor for the electrical, it, it impedes current. And we have a physical impedance, mu, for the mechanical. Finally, we have some kind of motion in each case. So for the electrical circuit, it's the resulting flow of current, the motion of current I. 
in the mechanical, it's a velocity, v. So we've already seen here that there's some analogies between voltage and force, as well as between current and velocity. These analogies exist through many different electrical and mechanical parameters as well. Let's see a few more. So by this point, you might be happy with some of these analogies. Some of them might make sense to you. But the last entry looks a bit strange. What does an inductor, which is in electrical or an, as an electrical component, it's basically a coil of wire. What does an inductor have to do with mass in mechanical engineering? Well, to explain this, let's have a look at one of the most famous equations in physics you might have heard of. It's one of Newton's laws and it says force equals mass times acceleration. So in sort of um, in mathematical terms here, F equals MA. So recall that the acceleration is the derivative of velocity. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So instead we could say that F equals m dv by dt. At this point, let's revisit the describing equation for the inductor that we saw in the previous section. Vl equals l di by dt. So we've already established earlier that voltage is analogous to force, which again we see here. We've also seen that current is analogous to velocity, which again we see here. So that leaves us with mass m, which you can hopefully now see is analogous to inductance L. The last comparison that I want to outline here is that of the capacitor with a spring. Again, it might not make sense to see those two side by side. As a mechanical property, a string can be stretched or compressed. The spring's length is displaced. Notice the analogy of displacement with charge. The spring stores a potential energy, since the spring kind of wants to return to its initial length. If we stretch it, it wants to, to go back again. So the spring equation looks something like this. It's something called Hooke's Law, and you might have come across this equation before. Uh, F equals Kx, where F is the force applied. K is the spring constant. It, it's kind of a measure of the stiffness of the spring. And x is the change in length of the spring. Sometimes this is written as delta L, but we'll just call it x for now. So given that the displacement x is the antiderivative or the integral of velocity, if we integrate velocity, we get displacement or distance, we could instead say something like this. f equals k multiplied by the integral of v with respect to time. So now you might spot the similarity with the describing equation for the capacitor that we've seen previously. We've already seen that voltage is analogous with force, which we see again here, as well as the analogy between current and velocity, which we've seen before as well. This time, we also see that the spring constant K is now analogous to 1 over C. So let's summarize our findings by sort of... Um, putting these all in a table here, what we've seen. In the following videos, we'll probably focus primarily on electrical examples, but we'll also see some mechanical examples as well. But we shouldn't be too alarmed if we see electrical when we'd rather look at mechanical or vice versa, because actually we see these analogies mean that the mathematical methods uh, won't differ too much between the two. They're very comparable in many respects. So in the following videos, we're going to derive some system uh, functions for different mechanical and electrical systems and then we're also going to try and solve those using various methods to work out the system responses um, for various systems depending on different inputs that we put into those systems as well.